Hello everyone, it's Mio here and today I have a different tutorial for you. I'm going to show you how to upcycle a regular t-shirt into a shredded crop top. Everything from hand dyeing, shredding, braiding, and ironing on your own design onto your t-shirt, I will be going through here in a step-to-step -step tutorial. This project does take some time, but it's fairly easy to do. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? You're going to need a bucket you don't care for. It needs to hold at least a gallon of water. I bought this one from Target for about $2 and I like it because it comes with a scooper as well. And you'll need a t-shirt. I bought mine in a huge pack, but you can upcycle one of your older ones. And some dye. This is just regular tie-dye that you can buy in the craft store. Um, just pick the color that you want. I'm using teal here. I'm going to first boil some water. I don't want it completely boiling, I just want it steaming and I need to steam about a gallon of water and I need to measure out some salt for my dye. So I'm just taking about a third of a cup of ionized salt. It really doesn't matter what type of salt you use. I would just follow the instructions on your dye packet that you buy. I'm going to go ahead and place this into the bucket and once my water is steaming but not boiling, I'm just going to pour all this content into my bucket. Now you want to make sure that this is an area that might get messy because dyeing is not a very clean thing to do. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. So go ahead and mix your salt into the steaming hot water and just pour the contents of your packet into the water. Just stir everything until it's a nice dissolved mixture and be sure to be careful that you don't stain anything you don't want to stain. So once everything was mixed in, I went ahead and dipped my shirt into the dye and the dye was just so opaque and dark, it didn't end up being the way I want it. So I ended up changing this tutorial a bit. I actually end up getting an extra bucket of water because as you can see, the shirt is really, really dark and it doesn't have the exact ombre effect that I want. So with an extra bucket of water, what I did is take some of the dye and mix it into the water so it would lighten up the color. Once you're done mixing, go ahead and dip about half of the bottom shirt into this new mixture. You're going to notice that it barely stains the shirt at all and that's fine. You want it to be a very, very subtle effect where it progressively gets to a dark blue and that's what's so nice about an ombre shirt. So once you dipped about half the shirt in, add more color to the water bucket and dip your shirt in again. And you want to do it progressively fewer amounts of your shirt in. So when the bucket color is very, very dark blue, only a third of your shirt or maybe a quarter of your shirt is actually seeing the dye. Repeat the process several times. I actually lost count how many times I did it and I just eyeballed how many times to do it based on the color of my actual shirt that I had. I will say this process takes a lot of time and patience. So once I have it kind of in an ombre color that I want, the last part I did is went ahead and stick the shirt in the bucket, just the tips of it so that it would be a really, really dark blue teal color. So this is what my shirt looks like after I'm done dyeing it. It's really wet, so I'm going to let it dry. You can either hang dry it or you can put it in your dryer. Just make sure if you dry it, you put it on cool and you don't put it on other clothes that you don't want to get the dye on. So while this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and get the image for my shirt. I'm using graphicstock.com. I'm just using this website because it has a huge library of photos that are all royalty free. So if you end up selling your shirts, you don't have to worry about the royalty. They have a 7 day free day trial that you can try out so you can get the images you want, try it out and see if you even like it. I'll leave information in the down bar so you can check it out later if you want. This is the picture that I chose. I think it looks so pretty and what I did is went ahead and download and saved it and I opened it onto Microsoft Word so I can blow it up really, really large and print this out. Now for my image in particular, I don't have to invert it, but if you're going to use white fabric transfers, you need to invert your image. If you're using a black shirt, you don't have to. So I went ahead and printed my design out onto one of these pieces of paper. The way Just follow the transfer sheet instruction manual. So this is my shirt all dried. It has a really nice ombre effect and this is the design that I printed out on the transfer paper. It's going to look something like this on my shirt. Just cut out your design. It doesn't have to be perfect because the white transfers, the white part will actually be clear and you won't see it, but for black ones you do want to be more exact. So before you shred everything and iron on your design, you want to put on your shirt so you can kind of get a feel as to where everything goes. This is where I'm going to put my design and I'm going to kind of figure out where I want to shred it. So I'm going to shred my shirt starting right here because I want it to be a crop top. I'm just taking a pencil and I'm putting a little dot there so I know where the reference is. 
I'm going to start off by cutting off the collar of the shirt. Now my shirt collar has this one inch thick collar and my shirt is large enough where I don't need a larger neck than it already has. So I'm just going to cut off the collar and the key to making a really good looking shirt is actually tugging. So make sure you stretch out whatever parts you cut. You'll notice as the more you stretch out the shirt, the wider the hole becomes and the shirt starts rolling these small rolls on the edges. Alright, so this is what the color of my shirt looks like so far. I'm going to start shredding out my shirt. So if you remember earlier, I put a pencil mark where I want it to start. So I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and start cutting out some strips. I like my strips to be about one and a half centimeters in terms of width. And you want to make them as even as possible. You also want to try to make sure you don't leave too many shredded pieces all over the shirt. So make sure you cut with long, thin strokes. It doesn't have to be perfect because once you start stretching out these strips, it'll all look pretty even in the end. But just for a rough guideline, you just kind of want to make sure that they're all about the same size or so. So my favorite part of this tutorial is actually to pull on the strips. As you can see, when you pull on them, they become thinner and longer and it actually makes the shirt look professional like you bought the shirt itself. So I think this is so much fun. You just have to do this to the entire shirt itself. I think a shredded shirt looks really nice, so if you shred up your shirt and that's as far as you want to go, that's completely fine. I decided that I wanted to take a few steps further and form a cute little braid on my shredded top and I will show you guys how that's done. So once you shred up your top, I have a few of the bottom pieces that are actually thicker than a top and what I'm doing is I'm tying a knot at the very bottom. I think a knot looks a lot better than having this weird rectangle at the very bottom. It also gives the shirt a little more weight so all the shredded pieces actually hang downward instead of floating around in midair. So this is what I did for my shirt, so now I'm going to start braiding them. What I'm going to do is for each pair of strips next to each other, I'm going to tie a knot about one inch down from the origin. Just do this on the entire shirt. It's going to take some time and once you've braided the entire first layer, you can move on to the second part. To form the second layer of knots, what I did is I took one pair and I took not the next one though, but the following pair and I tied two of their strings together. So as you can see, I took one string and instead of going to the one next to it, I went over one over, so I skipped one and tied these two together. So in case that was too fast, I'll do it again one more time. I have one strip, I skipped the next one, take the next one, so I have one skipped in between, and tied these two together. And I do this for the entire shirt. So this is what my crop top looks like so far. I think this is so cute. I think it makes a wonderful cover up for the summertime when you guys are going to the beach. So I'm going to go ahead and iron my design on. And I kind of eyeballed where I wanted this design to go on once I tried on my shirt and I kind of marked out where it's going to be placed. So this is what my transfer looks like. What I'm going to do is place it down flat onto my shirt and I'm just going to take an iron and iron it down. As you can see, I'm not using an ironing board because on the instructions for the transfer sheet, you need to use a heat resistant surface and not an ironing board. It was very specific in the instructions. So I'm just following along the instructions on the back and once you're done ironing everything, you can just peel off the back sheet and this is what my shirt looks like when I'm all done. I recommend you guys to hand wash these shirts, if not just wash them very gently and do not dry them. Putting them in the dryer might ruin the actual iron on surface, but I think this shirt is just so cute. I went ahead and just cut up the sleeves so they rolled up a little bit and I think it's the cutest crop top I've made so far. It's a great way to upcycle your shirts and I hope you found this tutorial useful. For more videos like these, please give me a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye!